up in the sky. Look, it's captivating. It's energizing. It's Alliance's Heroes. Alliance's is the destination for entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, inventors, leaders, celebrities, and startups. Where our heroes in business align. Now, here's your host flying in, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. Yes, that's right. And you know, just what an amazing opportunity is to be able to share with you the interviews and the people that we are able to interview and share their knowledge with you. It's truly amazing and we always appreciate the feedback. So keep it com- keep it coming, especially when I recently interviewed the vice chairman of Ernest and Young. So you can check out those past episodes by going to eliancer.com. That's E L I A N cer.com. All right, I've got I've got a few words for you. Blockchain, NFTs, <laughs> DeFi or DEFI and much more. And we're going to learn what those mean. We're going to learn some really interesting things on the latest technology that's out there <laughs> with Hamiz Awan. He is the founder and partner of Plutus 21. It's a strategic investing blockchain technology. And you could reach him just by looking down below at Plutus21.com. The link's below, also the website's below. So welcome to the show, Hamiz. Thank you so much. Uh, really a great opportunity to be here and uh, you know, excited to, to speak with you. Well, it's, it's, it's going to be incredible. You are a wealth of knowledge. And I want to get really right into it is, all right, so you have the strategic investing blockchain technology firm. What exactly, though, does that mean? <laughs> uh, it really is quite simple. You know, I'm sure people are familiar with investment firms that invest in more traditional things, you know, like equities or real estate. Uh, we do the same thing, but we just focus on blockchain uh, technology as an investment. Um, and we specifically focus on blockchain infrastructure. All right. So companies come to you and you invest in those companies. Talk to us about maybe some of the various technology that's out there of what you are investing in. Absolutely. Uh, You know, when people hear the word blockchain, they usually just think about currencies. Um, And, you know, from from that, the most popular one being Bitcoin. Um, The the blockchain is uh, really just an innovation um, on, on how databases are structured. Um, and our information is shared. And so there's a lot more to it than just currencies. Uh, people are building uh, you know, banks on the blockchain. They're building insurance companies on the blockchain. And, and those things are really what are exciting to us, uh, which is far um, broader than just the currency aspect of this, um, which is going after you know, many of the traditional businesses um, that you and I are very familiar with and, and giving them a technology uh, spin um, and making making them more accessible and cheaper uh, to the vast majority of people that, that don't have access to these financial services today. Um, so we love investing in that type of innovation uh, where we can see uh, millions of people around the world finding value in, in those uh, technology solutions. And talk to us about what you see in the future. Do you eventually see everything going on to blockchain? Um, not everything, you know, there are certain businesses that uh, really cannot be taught to computers. Um, you know, there's uh, advisory or, or doctors, you know, that's much that's a much harder business to teach to a computer. But if, if there's a business out there that can be taught to a computer um, and, and that by that, I mean, you know, many of the uh, many of the businesses today are just purely based off of inefficiencies. So they're pushing paper or or they're, they're doing like repetitive tasks um, for, for people. Uh, those type of businesses are probably going to be first. Um, they will be taught to a computer um, and that will be that a lot of that will be run on a blockchain. Um, so absolutely, I think major parts of our economy are going to um, see less people involved and more computers involved. And then blockchain is going to be a very big part of that transition. And as big as blockchain is now, why do you think, and I'm safe to say this, the general public has no idea what blockchain is. We hear it every day in the news, but we don't know. 
Uh, yeah, and and you know it's actually uh, very interesting. I, I don't think that it matters uh, whether the general public understands the intricacies of the technology behind this, right? Because you and I have sent emails today. You know, both of us received emails and sent emails, but I don't think either of us can explain how the email protocol works, right? Like, but but it doesn't matter because it's faster, cheaper, and easier, you know, than traditional mail. And so uh, there will come a point in time where blockchains will become so user friendly that my grandmother will send money using a blockchain and she won't even realize that she's done that. Um, and, and all that she will care about that this what, what users at the end of the day care about are products that are cheaper, faster and easier to use. They don't they let the engineers figure out how the actual technical stuff works. Uh, but the vast majority of, of consumers don't want to or don't have the time to understand how each you know technical uh, piece of their you know daily lives works. Okay, Hamiz, I want to make money on this. How do we <laughs> make money? Uh, you know, I, I I can't give any financial advice to anybody. Um, I think that this is just another uh, technological revolution which will have few winners but many many losers. Right, like the same way that, you know, in, in the 2000s, you had hundreds of companies that were trying to use the internet to solve uh, many different problems. And today there's really only uh, a handful that are relevant, right? And so there were thousands and thousands of other ideas and, and concepts that were not uh, successful. So it's gonna be very similar here as well. And that's why it's so difficult to, um, and we spend all day every day trying to make sense of this. It's so difficult to really, uh, see which one is going to be the most successful. Um, but I think uh, one of the good ways to think about it is whichever blockchain technology gets adopted by the most people is going to be the most valuable. And so if you can get a sense of where the users are going, then I think you can get a very good sense of where uh, w w which of these technologies is going to be the most successful. Now, with your firm, can somebody, do they invest into a fund or is it specific companies that they're investing in? And the second part is, is how do you go about finding those companies that you allow into your portfolio? Um, yeah, so we typically do have funds that people invest in and then those funds go and invest in a portfolio of different projects and companies and and ventures that we're interested in. Um, and again, you know, our North Star has been adoption. So there have been many concepts on um, all of the concepts using blockchain all sound great. You know, we're going to fix this problem in the world and we're going to fix that problem in the world. But the truth is that 99% of those ideas and concepts are never going to come to a stage where they have a working product that people use on a daily basis. And so because we have such a strong focus on adoption, uh, things that are actually being used by people on a daily basis and they keep coming back and finding value in those uh, products and services. Um, that's how we decide what goes in the portfolio and what doesn't go in the portfolio. Um, because at the end of the day, the only reason technology is valuable is not because you and I think that it will go up in value or you and I think that uh, it will solve a problem. It's when the mass of users find value in it on a daily basis. That's the only reason the technology is valuable. And so we like to, we try our best to figure out which of the uh, applications of blockchain are getting the most users and will continue to get the most users. Well, we're going to want to find out about NFTs and DeFi and any of these other terms that, again, we're always hearing about. But before we do, remember, you're listening and watching to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. Make sure you go to alliances.com, E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. Why? Because, again, it is the only place where entrepreneurs align because we have with us Hamiz Awan. He is the founder and the partner of Plutus 21. That's a strategic investing in blockchain technology. And you can reach him at Plutus21.com. And of course, we'll have it on our website also. All right. I read a ton about NFTs. It's all over the place. It's the biggest thing. And some of these NFTs we're hearing are going for gazillions of dollars and so on and so on. And you just put something up and you make a lot of money, but that's probably not the fact. So fill us in, please. Absolutely. So, you know, NFTs are, are here to stay. The concept of digital collectibles is something that isn't going anywhere. 
Um, having said that, investing in NFTs is just as difficult as investing in uh, art or, or collectibles in the real world, right? So just because you know something about blockchain or you might be comfortable with technology doesn't give you any edge in understanding which collectible will be valuable to somebody else in the future. Um, and so if you are a really good um, uh, collector of baseball cards in the traditional sense, um, then you probably have a good chance of being a really good collector of baseball cards that are digital now. Uh, but you can't just make that transition without knowledge of those collectibles and, 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 and those digital, um, you know, digital uh, or pieces of art. Um, I, I, I think that NFTs will go far beyond just these paintings and you know, baseball cards. I think there's going to be innovation um, by entrepreneurs. Uh, we've already heard some examples of sports teams taking the tickets that they have um, and making them NFTs so that if those tickets get resold to other people in, in a secondary market, uh, the original team still gets a cut from every sale that happens. Uh, we've seen examples of paintings doing the same thing where if a painting gets sold again, the original creator of the painting gets a cut from that transaction because that can all be codified into the blockchain and can be taught to the painting um, as it gets sold. Um, but I think NFTs are also going to be experiences. Uh, I can totally imagine a world where somebody like, you know, Taylor Swift says, you know, I'm going to have an NFT, a super fan NFT. And anybody who has this super fan NFT can get front row seats at any of my concerts and can come see me in the backstage if they'd like. You know, those NFTs are going to be valuable. There's going to be there's going to be real value that fans attach to that. Um, and if one of these artists does something like that or one of these sports teams does something like that, then everyone is going to follow suit. So the concept of digital collectibles is here to stay. Uh, but the idea of, you know, buying these things and making a quick buck is, I think it's, um, it's probably not going to work for the vast majority of people because the vast majority of people don't have the knowledge to understand which collectible is valuable and which one is not. This is truly amazing. I mean, what, all the things that you've said, it opens up an entire whole another industry like never before. Absolutely. And potentially we're talking about almost royalties for life from the original person. Absolutely. Like we could have a recording of this um, and anybody that wanted to watch this would have to have a certain NFT. And every time they purchase that NFT, we would all get royalties from it. And that can be tied to the NFT. And that can be codified in the blockchain so that no matter what happens, as long as that transfer happens, the original creator gets a card from it. Now, is how is your firm involved with NFTs? Is it? Um, yeah. So the way that we are involved is we invest in the infrastructure that allows NFTs to exist, to be created, to be transacted instead of the NFTs themselves. I have no specific knowledge about a painting or a certain artist, but I think our team has some specific knowledge on understanding which platforms are gonna be used to make this entire ecosystem run. And so we invest in those platforms, not necessarily the NFTs themselves. Tell me what you would share now, knowing everything you know and where the future may take us with all of this the type of advice and secrets that you would share to those that are in high school now that want to make their mark in the world like you have and continue to do? Um, absolutely. I would say that we have to realize that the, the decisions that our parents made or our grandparents made were in a completely different world. The world is very different today. The jobs of yesterday are not relevant anymore, and there's not going to be relevant in, in 10 years either. And so look to the future to figure out what you're passionate about. Um, and regardless of whether it makes sense today, uh, if you can see a world where more and more technology comes into our lives and creates entire new industries, and that's something that's interesting to you and you're passionate about it, um, don't go down the, the, the beaten path that everybody has already taken. Try to create your own path because it's really is that kind of illogical to expect, you know, extraordinary results by doing ordinary things. You kind of have to do extraordinary things to expect extraordinary results. Um, and so you have to take the, uh, you know, less taken path and you have to create something for yourself and, and just make sure that you're, 
you're really passionate about it because if you you are you know no force in the world is going to slow that progress down and you're going to get something out of it all right we got time for one more question listen hamiz i know what wi-fi is i know what hi fi <laughs> is but i don't know what defi is <laughs> absolutely so defi is all of the financial services that we are used to you know banks loans um insurance companies uh the new york stock exchange like all the financial services that we're so custom to are now being built on the blockchain and when they're being built on the blockchain there are no companies or people involved you're able to go buy and sell something or lend something or borrow something without any people involved in the middle so you're completely cutting out the middleman which uh, are you know some of the largest institutions in the world and you're replacing it with a piece of code that just has the rules of the game and as long as you follow the rules of the game you can get financial services from anywhere in the world with an internet connection that's what defi is fantastic well hamiz you invest in the future and educate on blockchain technology educating us on it that's a hero hamiz alan that's right uh, he is the founder of plutus 21 make sure you reach him at plutus21.com this has been david hogan with the alliance of heroes show